Uh, thanks, uh, Cahirlock. Uh, well, obviously, the UK, I think, uh, started its uh, PFI programme uh, around uh, 1990 or so, um, and I think the, the total estimated values of their PPPs is something like 32 billion, uh, whereas uh, in Ireland so far it's around 2.3 billion, and we've been used to, uh, over the last government's existence in this government, to these you know, school bundles and other proposals in relation to housing and, and critical infrastructure. And, of course, the reason that uh, government turned in that direction uh, is precisely because of the blanket bank guarantee, the crash, um, uh, the total, uh, the, the decision to totally eviscerate capital spending in this country for a decade, which was a deplorable decision, and everybody involved in it really shouldn't be in this house, Cahir, look, uh, I don't believe. But if you look at the, the British record, um, uh, there's been very severe criticism of, uh, of uh, PPPs, the operation of PPPs in Britain. They've had the experience of Carillion as well. And, and just take even one of their most distinguished uh, economists, Martin Wolf, uh, who writes in the FT in the Financial Times, he says, a PFI contract creates a long-term contractual liability, just as government borrowing does. Accounting procedures that treat these two ways of financing services differently are fraudulent. Um, a PFI must not be used simply to shift a liability off the balance sheet. That's a swindle and as such quite disgraceful. And it, it, is, a, a, it is basically, he's right, it is basically a swindle. Uh, we, we've seen a whole range of, of um, economists, I think, um, also bring a very critical um, study to bear on the operation of PPPs in this country. Uh, people like uh, Colin McCarthy uh, have called that uh, the, the whole idea of entertaining a PPP without doing a cost-benefit or cost-assessment analysis before you proceed with any major project uh, is totally, is frankly totally crazy because you, you don't know what the, the rate is, what the discount rate is and so on. Uh, we've had the uh, excellent organisation NERI uh, headed by uh, uh, Dr Tom Healy uh, and the, um, the Economic Research Institute, uh, and in 2013, through them, I think we, we had uh, the Owen Reeves paper, Public Private Partnerships in Ireland, a review of the experience, and it highlighted, of course, grave deficiencies in PPPs, particularly around the awarding of contracts, governance issues, and also the proper value for money analysis. And of course, in 2011, we've had a former chair of the Public Counts Committee here uh, just before me uh, talking about the operation of PPPs. But in 2011, the CNAG report uh, made some devastating conclusions uh, in, in relation to PPP expenditure called a sunk, sunk cost that, that has delivered no effective benefit uh, and pointed out the ongoing impacts of course on the national debt and our national debt as the Minister knows at 206 billion euro is still very very significant. There was actually a, a 10 year review uh, of PPPs in Northern Ireland uh, called the use of private finance initiative public private partnerships and it found that uh, public finance of course bottom line it does create an ongoing public debt and, and it said that the additionality of public finance is illusory and finance costs are higher for the, pri uh, for, for the uh, private sector. So the whole logic, the whole rationale of this uh, by any reasonable credible economist and you can look at the whole, uh, across the board from people like uh, Mariano Mazzucato at the University of London uh, who always stresses uh, the entrepreneurial nature of the state that the state because of uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, interest costs and and so on, and because of its expertise, if it mobilises it, is the best, uh, best organisation uh, to provide public infrastructure. Uh, we've had recently, I remember the Budget, Budgetary Oversight Committee, as you know, Cahir, look, and we recently had the, um, our excellent Parliamentary Budget Office under Director Annette Connolly uh, publishing the, uh, the review of uh, public-private partnerships. Um, and in fact, uh, you, you know, when you look through that, while it's conceded, obviously, you would hope that you'd get higher quality output, knowing that that the, the, the private providers would have to maintain it for maybe 20 years into the future. But at the end of the day, really all it offers is moving uh, critical, the cost of, of critical infrastructure uh, off, off balance sheets. Um, one of the final issues I, ju I just wanted to mention too, in, uh, and we had of course a long discussion about the Carillion uh, uh, collapse, uh, one of the final issues I wanted to mention also of course in relation to PPPs is the treatment of workers uh, and how workers ha have been treated at times. I mean, we, uh, I think a number of us, uh, process some of the deputies who are here in the House with me, my colleagues in Independence for Change, uh, we became aware, of course, of the, uh, the whole phenomenon of phony uh, phony, um, um, phony employment uh, or, or phony um, SMEs in the building industry uh, where, where uh, people were forced uh, Moria, to work uh, for themselves when in actual fact in every respect they were employees uh, but they weren't allowed, they, they weren't permitted uh, social insurance, they weren't permitted pension rights uh, and they were treated very badly across a whole
whole range, and that battle is still ongoing. So, uh, as my colleagues have concluded, uh, I, I believe the PPP model is badly flawed. It's something that we, sh we shouldn't be resourcing to uh, now that, uh, hopefully, uh, with positive tax revenues, uh, we do have, uh, coming down the line, a significant uh, possibility of spending in the future. I think we should do it uh, through this state and this house and provide the infrastructure that our people deserve and, and, and desperately need in health, education and so on. Thanks, Thank you very much, Deputy Brewer. Now, before we go